Hi, and welcome to a new series that I'm doing where I'm ranking cities. Uh, we're starting with the largest cities in the United States, so I can just get these out of the way. And uh, eventually I'm going to turn this more into a longer drawn out thing where I put cities in a list. If you've ever seen uh, Doug DeMuro, Doug DeMuro has the Doug score. Here's an example. We have walkability, bikeability, transit access, housing, and other. And uh, walkability, bikeability, pretty self-explanatory. Um, does, does your city suck or not with biking or walking? Uh, transit access. Um, this, is, this encompasses a few things. Um, this is kind of like an overview of uh, my opinion on like a city's transit system. So it's frequency, the reach of the system, the types of like vehicles in the system. So AK, is it all buses? Or uh, do you have metros or trolleys, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, housing, housing is mainly judging. Do you have enough housing? What type of housing it is? And the main factor is the price of like living there. So for example, obviously a city that's gonna have extremely high rents, I'm gonna rate lower. And then other, you'll kind of see it on the chart here, it can be a mixture of things. It can be a mixture of uh, if a city has political problems, et cetera, et cetera. Crime is necessarily like a, a thing that you should care about or if specifically this is a large, uh, a large portion of this category is just devoted to weather. So like if you live in a city that has like really shit weather, like it's gonna, it's gonna be an issue. Speaking of kind of sucking, uh, let's start with Atlanta. Atlanta is your kind of typical Sunbelt city. Uh, it is only really redeemed by the fact that there is a transit operator and they do have a metro. Other than that, Atlanta is extremely sprawling. It literally goes from single family housing to skyscraper within like a quarter of a mile. It's impressive. There's no middle housing in Atlanta. Um, there's no way to get around Atlanta. There's no way to live in Atlanta without a car. It's impossible. You could possibly live in the downtown and only exist in the downtown with getting around on MARTA, but it would be very difficult. Bikeability, bikeability and walkability kind of go along with each other. Uh, Atlanta has huge strodes. It has uh, streets that are not designed very well. It has, it's broken up by highways. And like I said, it goes from single family housing to skyscraper within a quarter of a mile. So bikeability also kind of sucks. Uh, transit access. This is, uh, it's, it's better than some Sunbelt cities. Uh, you have technically four different lines for your metro system. Technically, the fourth line is kind of uh, like it doesn't kind of count because it's one spur to one station like the green line. Come on, green line. You could be extended. I think actually the green line was blocked because of NIMBYs, but I'll go back to that someday. Um, so because you have a metro system, that's a good start. Now you need to do transit oriented development. Um, otherwise, uh, it's just oof. You got buses and that's basically it that le that feed into the metro system. Uh, five out of 10 for transit access. Housing. Housing in Atlanta is tough. Uh, the rent is not that bad for a single bedroom. Um, it's 1700 average in 2022. Uh, so it's not the worst, it's not the best. Um, the problem is, is that most of Atlanta is single family housing. So, oof. so you're just going to be dealing with trying to break up a single family housing with roommates. That's, that's what you're stuck with. Um, otherwise there is portions of Atlanta that are like denser, but it's, those are not as common. Like some of the older districts or some of the university districts of Atlanta are slightly better. Um, and then other, other mainly comes down to the weather. Uh, it gets an eight out of 10 for that. Oh, housing gets a six out of 10, forgot to mention. But yeah, other gets an eight out of 10 because of the weather. And generally for the most part, Atlanta is relatively decent. The city that I will probably be going to this summer. Oh man, what can I say about Boston? It's a fantastic city. Um, it, it's an old city and that's why it's good. Um, it still suffers from just North American problems, I guess. 
Uh, but because it's an old city and because most of the people there can see the benefit in walkability, it gets a 9 out of 10. Most of the neighborhoods, even the suburbs, if you follow the green line out into the suburbs or if you follow some of the uh, commuter rail system out into the suburbs, even the suburbs have very walkable downtowns. Or they have like neighborhoods that have all sidewalks and their grids. Uh, bikeability. Bikeability is a little bit worse. Uh, because of Boston's older um, just layout of Boston, um, it's it suffers a lot with biking. Um, they're trying to fix it. And I've seen some really good advancements in the last few years with like bike lanes and protected bike lanes. So I feel like this score can go up a lot. But 6 out of 10 for biking. For hands of access. <laughs> So MB, MBTA is very good for the most part. They, the, honestly, what gimps them the most is they're extremely underfunded. Um, and they have old infrastructure that is incompatible with each other. Like the green line incompatible with all the other lines. Red line, orange line, blue line all use different rolling stock. Blue line has some weird ass shit where it has panographs. And then you have some like the Menamapan, I'm fucking that up the, the the fuck the trolley at the end of the red line you know what i'm talking about the thing i will give mbta is they are electrifying the regional rail soon housing uh housing is very good in boston but the problem is is that it's it's very dense very walkable and it's all within transit access just boston i would give you a 10 out of 10 but the problem is is that you do not have enough housing uh your rent is 2600 for a single bedroom that's insane that's that makes new york in some places look better don't do that you need to build more housing um build transit-oriented development i know and and this is the problem with some of these old places boston has so many old neighborhoods so many old suburban neighborhoods boston has is fantastic with most of its social problems its new mayor is fantastic um just the weather come yeah come on it's 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 bad in the winter so i'm i'm giving you seven out of ten on the other uh so that's boston so chicago uh i visited there before uh, actually last summer i love chicago uh i love grid cities i i'm biased toward grid cities walkability eight out of ten um, majority of the city you can get around with walking very easily. The further you go out from the core and the further you go out in certain neighborhoods, it gets l less good. But for the most part, because it's a grid and because of uh, the density of Chicago, it's 8 out of 10. Transit access. I fucking love CTA. CTA is one of the best transit agencies in the United States. They are willing to do small improvements to fix their system. They're willing to build and improve on small things, even with like the minute amount of money that they get. CTA will expand certain services and try to figure out like different bus routes that are slightly more efficient. They do have some problems with like hierarchical problems, but that comes with a lot of uh, uh, that comes with a lot of old agencies. Where Chicago really gets nicked, though, is obviously your commuter rail. I've made an entire video on it. Metra needs to improve. They can't just sit on the wingadinga old shit that they have. They actually need to fix a lot of it and improve. And that includes electrification, which I didn't mention in uh, my Metra video. Uh, so transit access. Because CTA is so good, and I think that the commuter rail for the most part is uh, is less important if you're living in a city, um, uh, you, Chicago gets an 8 out of 10, which I think is one of the best on the Housing. Chicago is very cheap uh, to live in. It's almost as cheap as one or two of the other cities on this list. Um, average rent for a one bedroom is 1600 that's pretty good by American standards. I, Chicago gets an 8 out of 10 for housing, which is the highest so far out of uh, other. Uh, Chicago has some neighborhoods with crime problems. It's more overblown than you think, but there is problems and issues that need to be addressed. Um, winter, winter in Chicago fucking sucks. <laughs> sucks balls. Um, yeah, so like, honestly, this city would be so 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 much better in my mind if the winter didn't suck as much as it did um so five out of ten for other 
Um, but overall, I love Chicago. It's one of my favorite cities. <laughs> So Dallas, Texas, um, Dallas, Texas, people like the shit on Texas cities. They're not as bad as you think. Certain places in the cities are bad. Um, but Dallas is definitely getting better. Um, walkability in Dallas is better than most people think because most of the city is a grid. Um, yeah, when you go further out, um, into the like sub suburb parts, it's going to be more crap, but I give it a seven out of 10 for walkability. Now, what really kills it is bikeability. Um, because of the strodes, because of the stranglehold of the highways around the core, Dallas gets a four out of 10 for biking. Biking fucking sucks in, uh, most Texas cities. Transit access, uh, DART is pretty good uh, for the most part. It's the most extensive light rail system in um, Texas. And um, it it's covers way more area than the one in Houston. Um, DART also has a decent bus system that covers even more that feeds into the light rail system. So I'm giving transit access for uh, Dallas a 7 out of 10, which is pretty good. Um, Housing, on the other hand, ooh, uh, some of the Texas cities are going up in rent, like, substantially. Housing, for two reasons, A, rent is high, and B, it's mostly single-family housing once you get out of the core. So, it's a 5 out of 10. Other, the weather is pretty good, and crime doesn't seem to be as much of a problem. So, it's a 7 out of 10. Now to the other Texas city, Houston. So, a lot of people have many things to say about Houston, mainly because um, it's notorious for being, um, like, the, shit, the city to shit on in urban planning circles, and, like, understandably. Walkability, though, yeah, it's not going to be good. It's 5 out of 10 for the city. Now, if you're in some, like, neighborhood like, like Hyde Park or River Oaks, like, it's going to be good. Um, or, or in the downtown. Um, but for the most part, the, the problem why walking and biking is so bad, because biking is a 3 out of 10. Um, the reason why it's so bad is you have so many strodes that, like, cut everything up. And then you have highways that strangle everywhere. You have so many belt highways. So, so many belt highways. And, like, uh, it's just, you could do so much better. And so many of them are unnecessary. They're so unnecessary. T text dot is insane. They they need to be stopped. <laughs> I, they're obviously paid off by whatever construction company is doing highway construction. Like it's insane. Um, transit access, uh, it's their light rail system is not now nowhere near extensive as Dallas. Um, so four out of 10 for transit access. Uh, housing is also not, housing is not as bad, like expensive wise as like Dallas or Fort Worth or Austin. Um, so it's a 6 out of 10, but still not that good. Um, other, Houston just has so many problems. But, like, along with that, the weather is, like, 100% humidity, like, 80% of the year. And you get massive hurricanes once in a while. Um, it's also because of how the city is built and how sprawled it is. When a hurricane does hit, there's no place for the water to go because everything's built up. So exactly what happened with Hurricane Harvey is going to happen again because they haven't fixed any of the sprawl. Uh, so six out of 10 for other. From the one city that everyone likes to shit on to the other city that everyone likes to shit on, it's Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles is, is trying. I will say that. Um, walkability, though, in Los Angeles, you can walk places, but the problem is, is that everything's so fucking far away. So, like, you, like, you can walk, and there's sidewalks everywhere, because everything is built up in the, in so so SoCal. But the problem is, is that everything's so fucking far away, because it's built for the car. Um, biking's even worse because like, yeah, biking might be better than walking because you can actually get somewhere in a reasonable time, but 
the problem with biking is that you have these massive strodes and you have California drivers and it's just like they no one no one thinks about you on a bike and there are good bike infrastructure areas where like there's bike trails but a lot of them also have issues um where los angeles is slightly redeemed though is um transit access los angeles has been building out their light rail network and they also are extending the subway line or one of the subway lines and because of that um los angeles is actually trying um there's also all the bus uh because it's a grid there's all um uh, bus uh, routes that all intercut in between the light rail that all connect with it. Um, so that that counts for something. The problem is is uh, the bus frequency is not good. And then the green line, oh my God, they need to fucking fix the green line. Like, what are you doing? Also, commuter rail to LAX to downtown. Just build it build it delete somehow delete like the two single family housing you have to like do to do it but just like come on just buy some stadler flirts run a fucking right of way that i'm sure you deleted from the pacific electric originally in the first place just put something down it again run it to lax come on if you really need to run it on the middle of a highway or something but like come on the lax connection is egregious come on uh, housing. Oh, well, I should say for transit access, it's a six out of 10. Even with all those problems, it's still better than a lot of American cities. Uh, housing. <laughs> it's California. Come on. It's two out of 10. <laughs> and then other, the Bay or the, uh, the SoCal gets all the points back in, in weather. Uh, it's a seven out of 10 because of the weather the three is taken off because of the housing problem because california's housing problem is so bad the homeless problem is really bad in the the area so like it would be so much oh my god la would be such a fantastic place to live if you just built more dense housing in around transit oriented development and you developed around the train and got rid of highways it's a it's a monumental task but it can be done and la could be a fantastic city Anyway, to the next one. Uh, To go from one coast to another coast, uh, we're going to Miami. Um, Miami is weird. Um, Miami, for the most part, is very walkable. Um, It's 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 all grids it's it's one of it's very similar to atlanta though we're in like a quarter of a mile it goes from like single family homes to like skyscrapers so you can walk everywhere it's just that like do you want to um so walkability gets a seven out of ten because it's pretty good um they want you to walk around downtown uh bikeability on the other hand because of the strodes and because of the layouts of certain places it sucks to bike um and worse than california drivers or florida drivers um so uh bike ability is a five out of ten which is better than some of the other cities i've said but still pretty bad uh transit access you have two metro lines and you have the only people mover in the country that is useful um and someone's gonna fight me for that uh but for the most part, Miami has decent transit. And with Tri-Rail and Brightline extending services and expanding services, it's getting better. So you get a 6 out of 10 for transit access. Uh, housing, for the most part, in Miami is like not nearly as expensive. Housing, for the most part, is pretty decent. I mean, like, it's a grid. You have the pretty dense grid for American standards. Um, you need to do more TOD and the rent is fairly high, but like for what Miami is, which is somewhat of a resort town, it's not that bad. Um, it could, it's still pretty bad though. Build more housing, build more transit oriented development. You will do better Miami. It's, it's the best, it is the best city in Florida. Sorry, all the other cities. Um, but the only contest for best city in Florida is, 
maybe Tampa, but even then, it, Miami blows it out of the water with transit. Um, with other, I mean, it's a Florida city, so like your your weather's fantastic. The only downside is hurricanes and climate change. So seven out of ten. Mister Finish Line. All right, and now to the city you all want to hear about, and. It's the one that I dislike in some uh, cases because it's the one that everyone talks about in the American context of urban planning. It's New York City. Um, I don't have a problem with New York City. I love a lot of parts of it, and I think that New York is a fantastic place for the most part. I do think that it has a lot of... Uh, it has a lot of problems that are systemic to just New York. Um, but for walkability, you can't beat it in the United States. It's a 10 out of 10. Uh, bikeability, it's getting better and it's gotten a lot better within the last few years. Um, it's currently one of the best cities to bike in. It's an 8 out of 10. Um, transit access, you it's New York City. You can't beat it in the United States. MTA is probably the best agency for transit in the US. Um, it's a 9 out of 10. And why is it not a 10 out of 10? And all the New Yorkers are raging, raging in the comments right now. Um, it's not a 10 out of 10 because MTA is underfunded and you know it. Um, the system could be a lot better. It could be a lot cleaner. It could um, fill in gaps that exist in like Queens. It could fill in gaps that exist in some places like the Bronx. It could fill in gaps that exist between New York and New Jersey. Um, it's all, all of the infrastructure is old. All the infrastructure needs rehabilitation and you need new infrastructure. That's what gets points off for New York. Uh, but still, it's a 9 out of 10. It's a great system. You can go across the entire city for 275 Like, that's awesome. Um, housing, though. Uh, <laughs> New York rents are known to be some of the highest in the country. And uh, don't kid yourself if uh, you're trying to justify living in a broom closet and saying it's a one-bedroom. It's not. Um, New York needs more housing. It needs so much housing that New Jersey has taken up a lot of the slack. And New Jersey has been the place that's uh, kept up on all the housing. Jersey City is fantastic for that. Newark has been doing that. Uh, Hoboken, Weehawken, all of those places. New Brunswick, where I live currently, has taken up a lot of the slack because people will actually do a super commute on the express trains from here to New York City for a job. Um, so New York City, build more housing. A lot of Queens has like single family housing. Just demolish that shit and build transit-oriented development out there. Yeah, uh, like, otherwise New York City is still one of the best cities in the U.S. It's just, you gotta lower rents somehow. Um, other than that, it's it's New York City, it's a 7 out of 10 for other. Um, the weather can get kind of brutal in the winter, but not as bad as, like, Chicago or Boston. Um, it's got... <laughs> Your main problem with living in New York City is that you are living in New York City. Um, the, the, with big city comes big issues, and you just have to get used to that. Yeah, and you just have to get used to people, because, like, there is a lot of people. There is quiet areas in New York City. Not everywhere is Manhattan, and I think I need to make a video on that, because there's so many, like, suburban Americans that always comment on my video, I don't want to live in density because it could be like a New York. It's like, no, no. You're thinking of just Manhattan. A very close relative to NYC is Philadelphia. Um, Philadelphia, like NYC, is one of my favorite cities along with Chicago. Uh, walkability, because Philly has old streets and it has very, like, um, dense, small, narrow streets great great walkability um where it loses out on walkability is when you get outside of the core and there's a lot of neighborhoods that have been split in half by highways or there's been a lot of neighborhoods that have been urban renewaled into like suburban like weirdness um that's where it gets bad um 
it's it's also just Philly, so it's weird to walk in some places because the sidewalks are just garbage because uh, they just haven't renewed them yet. So walkability, 9 out of 10, because, like, it's still fantastic. It's it's still one of the densest cities in the U.S. Uh, bikeability, uh, 7 out of 10. Uh, Philly does not have that many uh, bike lanes or bike infrastructure related things. They actually have though a higher ridership percentage per capita than New York City. And the reason why is just because the same as walkability. You have the, the two car lane streets that one of the lanes is parking and one of the lanes is like car movements. So it's like they're very narrow streets that people feel very safe biking in in the first place because car drivers have to go slow. So Philly is really good in center city to bike in but once you start getting further out of center city it starts getting more iffy um but for the most part philly is a really good biking city seven out of ten uh transit access uh for the most part septa has very broad reaching area within philadelphia the buses are actually quite decent uh the buses run 24 7 the subway does not run 24 7 except for patco which can be considered part of the network um, the trolleys are fantastic. Uh, they are one of the best parts of the city and SEPTA needs to put more money into actually doing the trolley modernization program. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, literally the only downside of Philadelphia's transit is that it's run by SEPTA. SEPTA is so inept at doing certain things and they're so backwards in how they try to do certain things. It's so frustrating when they just it's, that's all i can say septa is just very fucking frustrating um because they have so many old heads that think that they should do certain things certain ways also for the love of god do not build the norristown king of prussia extension put that money into regional rail high platforms and run more trains it's like a fucking billion dollars for a stupid extension off the norristown whatever you could build a fucking DMU service that runs up to Schuylkill on the Norfolk Southern's main line that goes over to King of Prussia on a branch. Like, do not build the stupid... You have... That money could go somewhere else. That's that's another video. Anyway. Um, housing. Housing is the best, if not one of the best, in the United States for pricing, uh, availability, and just location. Philadelphia has so much housing at a, such a low price that you can get a two bedroom for easily like a thousand a month in a decent part of the uh, city. Um, you can get a one bedroom that's in a luxury apartment in Philadelphia for like 1400 or 1300 It's insane um, by American standards. Uh, you can even get a studio that's like $700 or, or $600 somewhere in a decent place. Like Philly is insane with prices and it's on the Northeast corridor. It's not like it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, other Philadelphia has some systemic problems. The current mayor sucks ass. Uh, as, yeah. And the police department is simultaneously inept, but also overreaching. Yeah, Philly's got some systemic problems. Weather in Philadelphia is similar to New York, but not as brutal. Um, yeah, it's once in a while you, like Philly, will get a hurricane or a nor'easter. That will be bad, but it's very rare. Um, so other, because of the systemic issues, is a 6 out of 10. Otherwise, Philly is a very good city. And starting with another city that starts with a P, Phoenix, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh God, should I just play the Hank Hill clip? Oh my God, he's like standing on the sun. This city should not exist. It is a monument to man's arrogance. Phoenix is the equivalent of when you're playing like Civ Six, and all of the other land is taken up by some other player. And you're like, well, I have a settler. I have to put it somewhere. And you just put it, plop it down in the one spot that doesn't have a city yet. And then you have to deal with all of like, oh, I have a desert city. This sucks ass. And I haven't built Petra because someone else built it. That's Phoenix. It's why is it in the location it is? Why is it so big? It's, uh, it is, uh, this is a rant for another video, but it might as well go here. Um, walkability, four out of 10. 
do you want to walk like a long distance like la but you're in like the scorching 110 heat no uh bike ability slightly better because phoenix is actually trying uh five out of ten transit access i i want to rate this better but i can't it, you have two light rail lines one of them only goes to the like airport and is a branch off of the main one they're building more light rail and they have a single street car and just uh like it's the sprawl you need to build transit oriented development you need to up zone you need to build fourplexes um you yeah it's transit access five out of ten the buses attempt to try but it's it's bad housing phoenix housing is rough um phoenix housing is rough um not because of the price um price and phoenix is actually depending on where you are is okay but the problem is is that when you actually want to live somewhere in phoenix that's close to like the light rail or the downtown it gets very expensive the um Otherwise, you're living out on the very edges of the city at a very lower price, but you have a suburban house in the desert. Um, and there's, yeah. <laughs> so, like, housing is a 5 out of 10. Um, it could be worse, but it could be a lot better. Um, and then other. My whole rant in the beginning was basically the other. Why is there a city here? 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 There shouldn't be a city here. <laughs> Four out of ten. <laughs>
So Washington walkability, if you're within the, the square that is Washington, D.C., and even some of Alexandria across the river, fantastic walkability. Um, once you get outside of the what is the core of D.C., it sucks ass. Uh, so like for what is D.C. and what I consider the city, 8 out of 10. Uh, bikeability, slightly worse. You're, they're, they're working on it. Downtown DC has some of the best biking infrastructure in the country. It's just they have to connect it now with the rest of everything else. So 7 out of 10. Transit access. Hoo, hoo. So W or WMATA, as we'll say, is uh, has a fantastic system that is laid out very well. The silver line goes to the airport. The red line connects to other cities. The... Uh, yellow and green line connect to the University of Maryland you, and you have so many other like connections that are actually fantastic and actually people can just go to their work say if you work at the Pentagon or if you work at somewhere in like downtown as a staffer you can get between all those places very easily with the system it works fantastically um, the only problem is is that uh, once you get further out it's the system turns into more of a commuter rail system than a actual metro so it really needs two things. Um, in the downtown, you slightly might need better connections or better um, frequency. You need way better frequency. And then you also need better transit-oriented developments that stops further out of the city. The other issue is WMATA has systemic problems um, with management. It's just, what are you doing? I... I yeah i don't know how to fix that but you need to f fix management i don't it's bad um housing dc is relatively affordable for what it is um it could be a lot worse and the housing that is there is very high quality it's very like dense walkable etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's a seven out of ten um other uh dc has relatively mild climates it's relatively protected from most um uh weather events and it, it's a very safe city the the only downside of dc is that you have to deal with politics you have to deal with politics all the time you can't live without dealing with politics or someone wanting to talk about it that's just how it is um so knock down some points from that otherwise dc is the highest on my other category so if you want to look, I will constantly be updating the spreadsheet. Um, but for now, it's a pretty simple spreadsheet. I might add more stuff to this eventually. But well, you can see that the top five cities that are on this list and how they're ranked is New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Chicago. Those are the top five out of the ones we have done today. Um, just like the Doug score, I will keep updating this and keep adding cities to it. Like next, I'll do more mid-sized American cities. Um, and eventually I'll do European cities, et cetera, et cetera, add when I, especially when I travel there. Because I like to go to the places first before like I can completely judge something. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching and uh, I will hope to see you in the next one.